Alright guys, this is Matt from Maths World Education. Welcome to another video. And in this video I'm going to show you uh, the solution to question 4, taken from step 2 from 2018. As always with these questions, I do strongly suggest before I do give you the step-by-step -step breakdown of the solutions that you do uh, take a moment to pause the video if you haven't already attempted this question and have a go at each of the different parts. It's always, impo it's always important with step to have a good stab at these uh, mathematical problems. It also helps, uh, helps get you prepared for the Oxbridge examinations for step. As always, if any of you guys do have any questions, then be sure to drop me a comment in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer any questions which you guys have any concerns. Stick it down in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's jump straight in to question four. So it says in this question you may use the following identity without proof. So it's actually giving you an identity uh, to use which is a strong hint uh, that that will need to be used in each of the different parts of this question. Now looking at part 1, uh, it gives you the interval that x is between uh, 0 and 2 pi, but can also include values 0 and 2 pi, uh, and it's asking to find all the values of x that satisfy the equation cos x plus 3 cos 2x plus 3 cos 3x plus cos 4x equals 0. So by using the identity uh, that it's giving you in the beginning, we can very quickly deduce with some number crunching that 2 cos 5x on 2 cos 3x on 2 plus 6 cos 5x on 2 cos x over 2 equals 0. And there uh, we can see that we've got a factor of cos 3x on uh, cos 5x on 2. Uh, we can take that out uh, and that of course still equals 0. And then we finally end up with cos 5x on 2 brackets cos cubed, uh, sorry, cos 3x on 2 minus 3 cos x on 2 plus 3 cos x over 2 equals 0. Now there's something very, uh, very important here with special reference to the value of uh, x over 2, uh, cos x over 2. And you can see very quickly that that does in fact equal zero. So we can see uh, that this implies that cos of 5x on 2 times cos cubed of x over 2. Uh, so I got myself confused. It does in fact say cos cubed x over 2 in the previous term there. Uh, I should not say 3x. Uh, I do apologise for the writing. So what are the possibilities uh, for this expression to be equal to 0? So either, either cos of 5x over 2 has to equal 0, or in fact uh, cos x over 2 has to equal 0, since cos cubed x over 2 must equal 0, so it would follow that cos x over 2 equals 0. So now we are working with those two possibilities. So therefore 5x on 2 uh, equals 2n pi plus or minus pi on 2 such that n is a integer or x over 2 equals 2n pi plus or minus n over 2 such that n is also equal to an integer so what we can do now is, is we can um, find out the individual values for x and we can see that that is uh, we've got that x equals 4n pi over 5 plus minus pi on 5 or x equals 4m times pi plus or minus pi such that m is an integer. Now the best way uh, to do this if you're ever confused is, is simply by plotting uh, the graph of uh, cos 5x on 2 and just picking off those points where cos 5x over 2 would be equal to 0. Now since uh, we are restricted in the interval uh, such that x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 2pi then x must 
b equal to the following pi on 5, 3 pi on 5, pi, 7 pi on 5, and finally 9 pi over 5. Let's move on to part 2. So we need to show with the result given that either x equals y or x takes one specific value which you should find. So once again we can use the uh, use the formula which is uh, given you that cos of x plus y plus cos x minus y minus cos 2x equals 1. And what we can do once again is use that very first uh, result uh, that we were given, the, the identity, and we can see that 2 cos x cos y minus 2 uh, minus cos 2x equals 1. And then we rearrange the equation and we can see that 2 cos x cos y minus 1 minus cos 2x equals 0. Therefore, we can use the um, double angle formula to uh, deduce that 2 cos x cos y minus 2 cos squared x equals 0. Uh, then we can take out a factor of cos x uh, and we can see that cos x times cos y minus cos x equals 0. And uh, again, using, uh, using the identity, again, we can see that uh, cos x, uh, brackets 2 sine x plus y on 2 sine x minus y on 2 equals 0. So once again, we have two possibilities. Either cos x is going to equal 0, or sine x plus y on 2 will be equal to 0, or sine x minus y on 2 equals 0. So breaking down those three possibilities gives us equations A, B and C. Uh, and we have three simultaneous equations all containing, well, not simultaneous equations, sorry, but three equations, two of which contain x and y. So what do you think uh, is going on with equations B and C there? B and C certainly do look like a pair of simultaneous equations, which you may need to solve. Now, since x is greater than or equal to 0 less than pi, and y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than pi, then the only solutions are, from the previous equations, m equals 0, is it x equals pi on 2. So there is one specific value which we have found, P equals 0 would imply that x equals y. And then, uh, of course, we've got the redundant uh, value when n equals 0, where x equals y equals 0. Let's move on to part 3. Now we need to find values x and y that satisfy the equation cos x plus cos y minus cos x plus y equals 3 over 2. So, gives you the first bit. Then, Using the same method as in the previous part, we can see that 2 cos of x plus y over 2 times cos of x minus y over 2 minus 2 cos squared x plus y on 2 minus 1 equals 3 over 2. This implies that 2 cos x plus y on 2 cos x minus y on 2 minus 2 cos squared x plus y on 2 equals a half. Now what we can do is times the top and uh, times both sides of the equations by 2 to get rid of the denominator on the right hand side of the previous equation uh, and then we bring, we can bring that over to the other side uh, to get 0 on the right hand side. So that 4 cos squared x plus y on 2 minus 4 cos x plus y on 2 times cos of x minus y on 2 plus 1 equals 0. Now we can see that uh, we can work with this further and we can see that uh, we now have what looks like uh, what looks like a square function there where 2 cos of x plus, uh, x plus y on 2 minus cos of x minus y on 2 all squared plus 1 minus cos squared x minus y on 2 equals 0. And 
uh, it progresses forward there since we know that 1 minus cos squared of x minus y on 2 equals sine squared of x minus y on 2 using that formula that cos squared cos squared of anything plus sine squared of anything equals 1. Therefore, we can deduce that 2 cos of x plus y on 2 minus cos of x minus y on 2 equals 0, uh, which is one possibility, or sine of x minus y on 2 equals 0. Therefore, uh, we can see that x minus y on 2 equals 0, or plus minus pi, or the other possibility is that uh, it's, uh, that implies sorry, that x minus y equals 0 and uh, plus or minus 2 pi. But with the restriction on x and y, uh, we can see that x minus y equals 0, which implies that x equals y. Therefore, 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. Uh, we can take the one to the other side so that we've got x, cos x equals a half, x equals pi on 3. In the, uh, in the given domain uh, for the value of x, we can see that that does in fact lie between 0 and pi, so we are all, all good. And uh, given that we know uh, that x equals pi on 3, uh, we can see from the previous uh, equation, since, uh, since x minus y equals 0, y must also be equal to pi over 3, and that is in fact our only solution. That concludes question four. If any of you guys have any questions uh, regarding the solution, be sure to drop me a comment down below and I will be sure to get back as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.